Good afternoon, everybody. This is Eileen Castellano. Thank you so much for tuning in today, Monday night, 9 p.m. I've made it nice and late for you guys to be able to tuck your children in, have your dinner. Um, I just finished dinner my, myself a little while ago. I had um, a late meeting at the office, which is awesome, amazing, amazing. Um, anyway, so I hope you're all doing great. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, Maria, thank you for joining. I hope everybody's having a great um, Monday, start of the week. And we're going to be addressing traumas today. Um, hi, Doris. Nice to see you. Um, you know, when I, when I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for all of you tuning in because for me, it's fascinating to watch how people could put their life on hold for a few minutes and just listen. You know, so again, I'm very grateful and. I try not to be obsessive about it, but but it it, it really touches my heart um, to know Nora, Grace, Elena, that you guys are are tuning in. I mean, I, everybody has a million other things to do, but tune in, Eileen. So again, I'm, I'm so grateful, and I, and I always have to say that, and I don't want to change that. That's the way I feel. Um, anyway, so we're going into trauma today. Trauma. Um, I had some people email me, texting me, Eileen, why are you talking about trauma? What is trauma? Like, why are we all going through this? Or why have we all gone through this? And um, one of the things that I, I do want to express to all of you, just to give you a, a big um, oh-oh, right? We have the ahas, and then we have the oh-ohs. <laughs> um, the oh-oh is that we've all gone through trauma. And I'm going to explain that in further um, at further length, because we are not just this lifetime, okay? We've got to all understand that we didn't just come into this world um, to be here, sacrifice, suffer, die, and then it's over. We came here to create from what we've learned from all these different lifetimes how to become better and how to be that better version of ourselves that we talk about all the time. So we've got to really come to a place where we can make a decision. Do you believe that you're just here to suffer, die, and it's over? Or are you really here to make an impact and create something with all the knowledge and wisdom that you've accumulated for all these lifetimes, all these, all these years, not just this lifetime? How do I know this? Is because I have worked with small children who have come with information that it was impossible for them to have unless it was coming from another time, another timeline. And I tell my stories. I had this little girl um, at four who felt that she was going to drown in a bathtub. And guess what, guys? She did in another lifetime. So I did a little bit of work with her. And when we understood where the information was coming from, she didn't have that trauma. She didn't have that fear. She could in the bubble baths again. So... This work is life-changing for people. Think about a four-year-old not being able to take a bubble bath or put the plug and just be able to swim around in their water for a little while because she was terrified that she was going to die in, by drowning. So we've got we've to gotta have an open mind. And, and I thank Wayne Dyer so deeply because he taught me from that book that he wrote, 10 Secrets for Success and Inner Peace, he taught me to be open to everything and attached to nothing. Very powerful word, be open to everything and attached to nothing. So I'm going to ask you all to be a little bit open with me tonight, okay? Cut me a little bit of slack and just, just, just hang in there with me for a few minutes, okay? When I'm talking about trauma, um, thank you, Katrina, Rios, Mary, Rose, Rosa, Vicky, Martha. Thank you for tuning in. Um, when, when we're talking about trauma, we've got to understand that trauma, traumatic events, mark us. And they create, it's, I, I see them like tags. They create like a hiccup. They create a knot in our energy field. They create a, a stoppage somewhere along the lines where we say, uh-oh, <laughs> I can't do that anymore because there's a reaction every time I do that. Um, either I get in trouble or I get spanked or somebody yells at me. And, you know, this is what children go through. But we go through this as adults as well. And when we're looking at the fact that birth, childbirth, think about it. You're in this mom's womb and whatever she's going through, 
you're receiving, but it's still warm and it feels cuddly and it feels safe. And then you come out and you're in this world. So imagine that just for that moment, there's trauma. It is, it is, it is something that impacts us. And we can't just pretend it's not there because traumatic events mark us. And there, those are the things that create triggers. And those are the things that create our, our energy to be divided and to be split. And so when we think about how many times have we been traumatized in our life, we got to go back to those shocking moments, right? We could have been in first grade and the teacher all of a sudden started to yell. Maybe she wasn't yelling at you, but you know what? She was yelling and maybe you're not used to yelling. Maybe yelling was not the way that people did things in your house. That's trauma. Um, I recall uh, many years ago, I saw this little girl who was, she was actually at that point that I saw her, she was like 16 years old and we did a little bit of a regression with her and she went back to the age of eight and remembering that she was standing in front of her refrigerator and she had spilled milk and her dad went on such a rampage with her and it was so, it, it was something that marked her so deeply, she felt like she had lost all his respect and that he had somehow stopped loving her because she spilled milk. Guys, that's trauma. And so when we make so much light of what trauma or traumatic events are, the first thing I'm going to tell all of you today is that you have trauma. You all have had some sort of situation in your life that took you by surprise to a point that it shocked you. Well, guess what? When that happens, what do we do is we store it in our unconscious mind. We don't want to remember that. We want to remember the good old times, right? We want to remember all that is good and great, but it's in your unconscious mind, which means that even when you don't think you have access to that information consciously, because you may not, unconsciously, that nudges you. And so when people come to me and they're telling me, Eileen, I'm afraid of the dark and I'm 40 years old because something happened when you were little, something happened along the lines that made you afraid of the dark. And so being 40 and still sleeping with the light on, what else can you do? And you may not even be consciously aware of it, but it's in the unconscious mind. Now imagine that now we're going to take that information and we're going to say, okay, that's what happened in this lifetime. But imagine all those lifetimes that you have lived and what happened in those lifetimes. I promise you all, you come with some trauma in your subconscious mind because the subconscious mind is everything we've ever lived, which is the recorder of all those different lifetimes and in this lifetime too. So in the subconscious mind, you have stored death. You died, right? Because if not, you're not here. You wouldn't be here. You all, we all died in another lifetime. We don't know how that happened. We don't know if we were killed. We don't know if we were hung. We don't know if we killed ourselves. We don't know if we, if we drowned. We don't know how that happened. We just know that we have all this information embedded in our energetic field. We have it in our, in our DNA because it runs through our bloodline. All this information of trauma. And then guess what? That is the same mind that you use to create all that you want in this lifetime. Your dreams are there. Your future is there. How you see your life. What you want to create, your creations are there. And how do I know all of this, guys? Is because guess what? I'm always my guinea pig. I'm always the first person that has to go through the drill. I did this. I went through all my different regressions. I've gone through all my different meditations. Believe it or not, I do regressions for others and I record them and then I play them back for myself. And so not only have I gone places to, to do hypnosis and hypnotherapy and regressions and Brian Weiss, my goodness, I, I love him. And he, he opened up so many opportunities and doorways for me to help me understand this information in his books. And so I'm telling you all from my own experience and from the practice that I have held for so many years that all this information, when it's, when it's all just in your mind and it's all mixed in, think of, a, 
think of a beautiful salad, right? You throw a little bit of vegetables and you've got your greens and you've got some dressing and you've got croutons and perhaps you throw some cheese and some eggs. Think that your mind is doing the same thing. It's got all this information and your dreams are in there. What you want to create, guys, is in there. How do I know? It's because this happened to me. My dreams were in the salad of all of it, of the good times, of the not so good times, of the moments that I felt that I was totally disconnected, the moments that I felt that I was totally done, that I wanted to just check out, the moments that I just wanted to disappear, the moments that I was so deeply disappointed in me. And I know that all of you out there have had moments like this. That's why we resonate with each other. That's why you're on this channel today. That's why you're listening. It's because you've gone through this too. And we try to avoid, right? Avoidance. That's our middle name, right? <laughs> I had that one too for a really long time. Avoidance. I want to say that I had a master's degree in avoidance. That's how bad it was. But you know what? Coming out of it and realizing it's just information and it doesn't define you anymore and you can totally move forward knowing that those were episodes in your life and in your lifetimes that are no longer in your present day moment of your conscious mind. Think about that. Because we can stay, hi Maya, Maribel, Monica, Holly, Kristen, thank you, Big Keith, for tuning in. We're not just our trauma. Our trauma is part of us. It's part of what helped us to grow. Those were the experiences, guys, right? We had to go to school. We had to go to elementary, high school, college. We had to. Now you tell me that there were classes that you didn't like, right? There were a lot of classes you didn't like. And then there were your favorite classes. The ones that you couldn't wait to get to. You couldn't wait to just sit in the front of the classroom. You couldn't wait until you spoke to the teacher and you raised your hand and you wanted to be as involved as you could possibly be. It's our life. Life is the same way. And so the trauma and avoiding what we didn't like were just those classes that we didn't like, that we didn't enjoy, that we didn't resonate, we didn't connect with. But then there were those beautiful moments of your lifetime that define who you really are because we did come into this lifetime to have it all. And how do I know? It's because I went through it first. I went through it first to teach you, all of you, that if I did it, you can do it too. And we give people so many excuses and so many opportunities. And we live our lives just trying to, to make sense of things that maybe don't have any sense at all to you. And so don't engage in conspiring against yourselves because if the trauma happens, leave it in the past and then help yourself renew, regenerate, redefine your life. That's what I did. I used all those re's to my, even the word retreat. I've done a lot of retreats for myself just to get me out. And so I'm encouraging you all today. Don't be defined by your trauma. Accept that you have trauma. That's the first thing we've got to do, right? We've got to have the awareness. Accept that at some point in your life or your lifetime, and how do you know? Is because the same type of people or the same type of situations continue to show up. How many of you have repeated patterns showing up time and time and time again? I know I did. I know I did. And I could see it and I could feel it. It's like, okay, God, okay, universe, why is it showing up again? What did I miss the first time? What didn't I get from the first lesson? Why am I repeating this grade over and over again? Why is this lesson just showing up? I thought I got it the last time. 
which is okay, right? There's classes that we just didn't do so well in, and it's okay. And part of you guys loving who you are, just loving who you are, means that you get to have another chance to do it better this time. Just do it better. And so I'm going to ask you all right now to just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Two minutes. Just close your eyes. And I want you to just breathe. And just imagine for a moment that you don't have to remind yourself to take this breath right now. But as you breathe, something you do automatically because you're meant to be here right here and right now and the breath that you're taking without any effort at all that breath keeps you alive is a reminder that you get to do it over again you get to choose a life that is trauma free the repeated patterns don't define you just breathe, just keep your eyes closed. Just think back at the same time that you defined your life as being trauma or being bad or showing up with the negativity or the wrong person again and again. In this moment of serenity, all you have is you, all you have is this silence. All you have is your heart that nudges you every day to be this beautiful essence of you. That's it. Without the negative, without the sad, without the anxious, without the fear. And in this moment of breath, in this life breath that you're taking right here and right now with me. You're in a space of serenity. You're in a space of self-love. You're in a space where you get to do it over again. You get to take that class again. Or you can choose a completely different class that has the same amount of credits that is gonna give you the same outcome. What a beautiful moment for you to just decide to do you. And you know what? Shame on them. If in order for them to feel better about themselves, they had to hurt you. Shame on them. Not shame on you. When you're ready, I want you guys to just open your eyes and remember this exercise. Remember these Facebook Lives? I keep them on. I save them. You can listen to them and you can go on there time and time again. Most importantly, my work for all of you is to serve you. Just like your work for you is to be the best that you can be. And realizing that it wasn't all peaches and cream and it wasn't all a beautiful rose garden and it wasn't all about rainbows and butterflies like children say. But you know what? You made it. I made it. I'm here. You make it. You can make it. We can do it together if you choose. We can work together if you want to. I'm here to serve you the power of these words that are going to remind you who you really are. And I tell that to my clients and they laugh all the time. Hi, Christine. Hi, Betsy. I remind my clients all the time when I tell them, just remember who you really are. You came into this life to have it all to have the greatness, which is I get to see in all of you the greatness. Even when you're down, even when you're not 100% on point, even when you're in avoidance and you don't even see 
I can see, I really see you for the beautiful, just amazing, enlightened spirit that came into this lifetime once again for the opportunity to learn, to grow, to experience, to have fun, and to love yourselves to the highest potential possible. Thank you all for tuning in today. Thank you all. I hope you have an amazing and amazing week. You know, I'll be here next Monday, 9 p.m. again. Looking forward to our next session, our next segment. And the possibilities are all within you. Love you all. Many blessings. Love and light to you. Good night.